I know that many people who watch my videos are often considering going to a boot camp because they're interested in learning how to code. And I wanted to just kind of talk on the subject of some of the things that you should consider before attending a coding boot camp. Because the truth is, while they do offer a lot of benefits, they're not completely necessary in order for you to learn how to code and get a job as a programmer. And that's going to be the first thing that I want to say is that if you're considering a coding boot camp, remember that you can learn this stuff self-taught and it's very possible. I have been working as a software developer for the last five years. I learned how to code completely on my own. It took me almost a year to land my first dev job, but I know for a fact that it's doable because I did it and I have been doing it professionally since I've set out to learn how to code. So don't think that you can't do this stuff on your own. Now, when you set out to learn how to code self-taught, it, it it's definitely gonna be harder than going to a boot camp or going to college because there's gonna be a lot less guidance and you're gonna have to figure out stuff on on your own which leads me into the next thing that you should consider when you're thinking about going to a coding boot camp is that even though coding boot camps do offer more guidance they're not necessarily a magic bullet and a free pass into becoming a programmer you're not just gonna pay you know x amount of dollars go to a boot camp for three months and just magically get a job as soon as you graduate there's still a lot of work that goes into completing that boot camp and getting job ready and while they'll guide you along the way you're gonna have to hustle and you're gonna have to learn and you're gonna have to put in a lot of effort into learning how to code and just because you get a certificate from a boot camp or you completed a boot camp doesn't necessarily mean that you're just gonna be ready as soon as you graduate you're gonna still have to probably put in work okay so now that we know that a coding boot camp isn't just gonna be a easy ticket into getting a job as a developer I want to say that you're probably gonna have to put in a lot of work after you graduate if you do in fact go through a boot camp and complete it you're gonna have to put in all the same efforts as someone who goes self-taught or a college graduate would in order to get a job a coding boot camp could help you prep for that but the truth is you're still gonna have to work on personal projects you're still gonna have to try to get experience you're still gonna have to put together a resume you're gonna need a portfolio you're gonna need all the things that everyone needs in order to get a job as a developer you're gonna just have to jump through all the hoops and go through the grind that everyone needs to go through when they first set out to get a job as a programmer and that's something that you need to consider when you are thinking about going to boot camp because the work that you put in at the boot camp isn't over when you complete it and you're gonna still need to put in a lot of work after you graduate the boot camp in order to get that first job I actually made a video on someone who paid $18,000 for a boot camp and then spent six months applying for jobs until they finally got hired. I think it was over 300 applications that they put in and multiple interviews until they were finally able to get their first job offer after a code boot camp. I'll link that video up above if you want to check that out, but it's just something that you need to consider when you're attending a boot camp. So now that I got some of that stuff out of the way, I want to talk about paying for a boot camp and how much boot camps cost and what you should think about when you're considering signing up for one and how much it might cost you. Now, one thing that I always tell people to be aware of is an ISA, an income share agreement. Boot camps will often package these ISAs as a, you don't have to pay us unless you get hired type agreement, which is pretty cool, but there are some things to consider when you do sign up for a boot camp that has an ISA. Oftentimes these ISAs stretch for multiple years and if you decide to attend the coding boot camp and you sign up for an ISA and you lock yourself in to agree to pay, you know, $20,000 to the boot camp that you're going to and then you end up completing it but you don't really decide to pursue it any longer at that current time and then a few years later you start teaching yourself on your own again and you get back into it and you finally land the job you're still going to have to pay that boot camp back if you are locked into an ISA and it's just something that you really need to think about when you're going into a boot camp and into an ISA with a coding boot camp also while we're on the topic of money I want to say that many times just because a boot camp is more expensive doesn't necessarily mean that it's better and just because because a boot camp is cheap or free doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. Sometimes you can find some free coding boot camps online. I shared something a while back about 100 Devs, which was a creator who streams on Twitch and does a live coding boot camp for free that a lot of people have been using and I've heard good things about and I shared it because it seemed pretty legit. Also, you can check around your local area. Sometimes your city or your county or wherever you live might offer a free or low cost coding 
coding boot camp. I know that that's becoming more of a thing, and I've seen that a lot of places are starting to do that. So it's something that you should consider. So don't think because you spend thirty thousand dollars on a boot camp, it's going to be way better than a boot camp that costs you, you know, two thousand bucks or a free boot camp. And while we're talking about what's better and what's worse, I want to talk about another thing: is that in-person boot camps are always 100% going to be better than online boot camps. But if an online boot camp is your only option and you're considering it and it's something that's that you can afford to do and you've done your research and you and you really want to do an online boot camp, then that's fine if that's your only option and it's what's in your game plan. But do consider trying to attend one in person because there's just nothing better than being in person when you're learning because someone can literally take your hand and show you how to do something. And I, and I think I mentioned, like, do your own research when you're looking into ISAs. Do your own research when you're looking in the boot camps. There's a lot of good boot camps out there and there's a lot of shady boot camps out there that feel like a cash grab. It's hard to tell the difference between between them and I haven't done enough research on many boot camps nowadays because it's not something that I necessarily am involved with or need to know about. But if I was considering signing up for a boot camp, I would just do a lot of research and I would watch videos, I would read blog posts, and I would do my best to stay away from boot camps that are sponsored ads and boot camps that are paying people to say good things about them. I, you know, dig as deep as you can if you're really considering putting money down on a boot camp because even though $20,000 isn't that much money, it's still a lot of money and it's something that you're going to have to pay back and it's something that you're going to have to like sign on the dotted line for and you should really, you know, put a lot of consideration into that. So don't just take one person's advice, make sure to do a lot of research and figure out what's the best option for you if you are deciding to go to a boot camp. And I kind of mentioned this a little bit and I want to talk about it a little bit more is that there's still going to be a lot of self-teaching involved. There's still going to be a lot of work that you're going to have to do on your own. And if you really want to get this done, you're going to have to put in that extra effort after hours when you're done with your boot camp and you're going to have to put in that extra effort once you complete your boot camp in order to get hired. And I talked about that already a little bit, so I don't want to keep going into that. But please do remember that there's a lot of self-teaching that's still going to be involved during, before and after the last thing that I want to mention that you should think about before you sign that dotted line and before you decide to attend a boot camp is that make sure you spend at least a week or two or maybe even a month learning on your own. Go through some of the free code camp curriculum, go through some of the Odin project, go through some paid tutorials that aren't too much money and go through some courses and curriculum and YouTube videos and things that are related to the area of software that you want to get into and see if it's something that you're actually going to like to do. Because even though software developers make really good money, the truth is that it's a hard job and it's not necessarily made for everyone. Although I believe anyone can learn how to code, I don't necessarily think that everyone should learn how to code because it takes a certain type of personality trait to enjoy this job. And it's hard to sit at a computer all day long, you know, trying to figure out how to fix problems and try to figure out how to do things better. And if you spend a couple weeks before you decide to sign up for a boot camp trying to learn how to do this stuff and you find that you're not enjoying it, consider maybe doing it a little bit longer self talk or maybe looking at alternative options for your career choice. Because even though you don't need to be passionate about this and you don't need to fall in love with programming, it's good to enjoy it. Because if you're going to be doing this stuff for the next five or 10 years, eight hours a day, five days a week, it's something that you should really consider before you decide to set out to spend a bunch of money or that big time commitment into attending a coding boot camp. I want to wrap this up by saying I'm not a huge fan of coding boot camps, but I don't necessarily think that they're a bad thing. I, I feel that there are many out there right now that are just trying to make a buck and they don't have very good intentions for their students. But at the end of the day, many of them do offer a good service. And as long as you do your research and consider a lot of the things that I mentioned in this video, if in fact it feels like the right thing to do, only you know what's best for you. All right, with all that said, I'll end this video now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.